Hello and welcome everyone on the Information Technology and Service Management PCB webinars. My name is Blair Arshala, the PCB organizer of this uh, webinar. And the today, uh, today's topic is Enterprise Architecture and Enabler to Organizational Agility. This uh, webinar will be hosted by Mr. Oluwesi Ojo. Mr. Ojo is currently uh, the Chief Enterprise Security uh, Architect and the partner at Iron Young uh, Info System. And uh, also, uh, he is a PCB certified trainer. Uh, if you will have any question or comments during the webinar, uh, please use the question box in the right hand control panel to write them. Or you may use the option to raise your hand and Mr. Ojo will answer to them uh, accordingly. Uh, please, Mr. Ojo, you may start the presentation. Okay. Um, good day, um, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mojo Uluwashi, uh, and um, I will actually be doing a presentation on the um, enterprise of um, organizational um, agility. Um, before I proceed, uh, I'm currently the uh, chief um, architect uh, as well as the chief enterprise security architect of um, Aaron Young. And I'm also um, a PCB certified uh, trainer. Uh, here's a brief uh, profile about myself. Um, you know, I've uh, co co you know I've done uh, several projects uh, in the area of um, information security and uh, enterprise architecture, uh, as well as um, security architecture. Uh, I'm a qualified uh, charter engineer from Engineering Council in the UK. And I'm also uh, a registered um, member of the Council for the Regulations of Engineer in Nigeria, which is uh, an equivalent of um, Chartered Engineer in the UK. I'm also a fellow as well as a Chartered Information Technology Professional of um, the British Council, uh, British uh, Computer Society. And um, I've been involved, um, I have well over 18 years of uh, practical experience which cuts across design, planning, implementation, teaching, training, mentoring, uh, just to mention a few. Here's a brief uh, qualifications that I currently hold. Um, I'm one of the few um, COVID um, certified assessor and I'm also a TOGAF 9 um, certified um, enterprise architect as well as certified um, uh, TOGAF uh, trainer. Yep. Today's um, webinar, uh, here's the agenda. We will be looking at uh, introduction. That's uh, introduction to, uh, you know, what exactly are we talking about? What exactly is, um, you know, agility, organizational agility, and how can enterprise architecture help you to achieve this? We'll also be looking at um, the elements of an agile um, organization. I uh, will be looking at um, what exactly is the definition of um, enterprise architecture and how can um, enterprise architecture be an enabler of um, organizational agility. And we'll be looking at benefits of um, organization that has actually implemented enterprise architecture for organizational agility. And we will look at the conclusion and you know, we'll bring the webinar uh, to an end. Um, introduction, uh, today's highly competitive and turbulent uh, business um, environment is, you know, forcing organization to not only, you know, flexibly adapt to changes, you know, when they occur, but they also need to proactively predict such changes, you know, before they impact uh, business operation. What that simply means is that uh, for any organization that still uh, um, wants to be in the forefront, you can actually use um, enterprise architecture to gain that um, organizational or business agility. And as you can see from you know, the diagram on your screen, uh, part of what makes up the um, agility, you need to be adaptive. Uh, that is adaptive planning, rapid adaptation, uh, economic efficiency, uh, low latency, uh, just to uh, mention a few. What exactly, you know, is organizational agility uh, from the look of things, uh, you know, from the definition from uh, Darren Connor, which, you know, is the author of characteristics of uh, nimble execution. 
a nimble organization is one that has a sustained, you know, I want us to take note of that word, sustainability, to quickly and effectively respond to the demands of change while continually delivering high performance. And we will see how, uh, um, you know, enterprise architecture can actually help us to, you know, achieve that, you know, ability in order for our organization to, you know, respond quickly and effectively and at the same time continually delivering that high performance uh, you know within our chosen industry here are elements of um, organizational um, agility uh, you know an agile organization is able to deliver value in everything you know she does they are also they also um, learn they always learn and you know they do better that is every opportunity is a learning opportunity for them. They have a creative problem solving uh, capability, um, you know, discovery as an organization and um, as the organization goes and they're able to draw from the experience because for every change, they are able to discover the organization and they're able to draw from that experience. Enough survey to know that uh, no two problems are quite alike then enough experience to confidently explore the differences. Because they have that agile capability, uh, they are able to quickly and efficiently respond to the changes, you know, within their um, organization. What is uh, an enterprise um, architecture? I'm going to take this definition from, I'm going to address this definition from two constituent parts. Um, I'm actually going to define what exactly is an enterprise and what exactly is an architecture. Uh, the open group defines enterprise as, you know, a collection of organization that has a common set of goals and or, you know, a single bottom line. In other words, they have, a, you know, a focus. That is, um, an enterprise can be a government agency, a whole corporation, a division of a corporation, a single department, or a chain of geographically distanced organization linked together by common ownership. That's, that's the definition of um, an enterprise. Uh, Gartner actually defines architecture uh, as follows. You know, it is a grand design or an overall concept employed in creating a system as, an, as in the architecture of a city or a customer information system also an abstraction or a design of a system. In other words, an architecture is a family of guidelines, you know, to whom when a building, you know, when building a new capability, that is concepts, policies, principles, rules, patterns, interfaces, and standards, this is what actually make up an enterprise architecture. Now, what is exactly the purpose of enterprise architecture? It, is, it actually helps to align you know, the business objectives, the strategic goals. From, from the diagram, they need it. Every enterprise has a vision, they have a strategy, they have a, an operating model. Now, you need to feed you know, the enterprise architecture model uh, you know, with this information. This, this serves as an input into the enterprise architecture. And once that is done, objectively and holistically, you will actually have capabilities in which will actually help the uh, enterprise service delivery as well as execution. And these also uh, will also serve as an, as an input back into the enterprise architecture and a feedback. You know, it, it's like a cycle. So what that simply means is that enterprise architecture ensures that the enterprise goals and objectives are addressed in a holistic way across the application development project, not just that, across the um, organizational uh, cycle. And here's the enterprise architecture process. Um, from this diagram, we will see that for every you know, organizational initiative, whether it is, uh, it is a strategic initiative, whether it is long-term, short-term, or uh, mid-term, uh, these actually has a way by which it feeds into the um, you know engagement model of the organization and if you look at the operating model the operating model 
needs to fit into the uh, enterprise architecture. Um, in, in, in the subsequent slide, you know, um, organization needs to decide, you know, when they are actually going to, uh, you know, work out or when they are actually going to make use of enterprise architecture that which, uh, you know, type of architecture exactly are they going to be, uh, you know, making use of because there, there, there are five major types of enterprise architecture frameworks and when we get to that slide, you know, I'm going to throw more light on that. Now, if you look at the bottom, which is the foundation for execution. This is where you actually need to ensure that you have that foundation. And this is actually the core for every business, you know, to ensure that for their foundation, you know, because you can also use the enterprise architecture for execution in order to execute your, your, your strategy, the organizational strategy, in order for you to actually achieve that um, agility. Here's the Gartner. Um, enterprise architecture process um, you need to define um, you know what are your you know development requirements what are the principles what are the models the business strategy uh, the, the, the first thing first is to for you to actually identify your stakeholders their level of influence uh, identify their concerns and ability for you to document it will actually help you in organizing your architecture effort because for every stakeholders, whether they are internal or external, they have concerns, they have their interests which must be captured right from the onset because that will actually help you in defining your future, uh, you know, state for the architecture as well as your current state. And, you know, the gap in between is what you, you now need to close up and ensure that every phase is properly uh, documented, which is uh, based on uh, the type of enterprise architecture frame framework that the organization uh, chooses to to you know implement. Now these are the five major types of um, enterprise um, architecture framework. You have the proprietary enterprise architecture framework. Uh, you have the open source enterprise architecture. Uh, framework. You have the group developed um, architecture framework. You have the government enterprise architecture framework, and you have the defense industry enterprise architecture framework. Now, each of these has examples um, for the proprietary enterprise architecture framework. Example of which is the John uh, Zachman, uh, which you know a lot of us believe that he is the father of um, uh, enterprise um, architecture. You also have the lead. Uh, which is um, an example of the open source. The LEED simply stands for a layered enterprise architecture development, uh, you know, which is um, the only open source and community-based enterprise architecture framework, which is based on international uh, standard. You also have the group developed um, architecture framework, uh, an example of which is the TOGAF, which is the Open Group Architecture Framework, uh, which is a common framework uh, consisting of um, an architectural, architectural development method and rules, you know, which actually helps for defining several kinds of architecture. Uh, today, TOGAF is the widely known uh, example of um, enterprise architecture framework. Uh, you also have the government enterprise architecture framework, which is where you have the uh, uh, which is the Federal Enterprise Architecture Framework. Uh, this is an architectural framework which was devised in, the, in 1999 by the U.S. Uh, government uh, Federal CIO Council for practice use within the U.S. government um, organizations. Uh, and lastly, you have the Defense Industry Enterprise Architecture uh, Framework, uh, an example of which is the uh, DODAF, that's the uh, the U.S. Department of Defense um, Architecture Framework. So these are types of enterprise architecture frame. Now, organization needs to decide which one is right for their environment. And this is one of the uh, reasons why enterprise architecture has actually failed to deliver the business value because organization don't actually sit down to ask themselves questions. Uh, that is, what exactly do I stand to achieve when I'm selecting uh, any of these five major types of architecture framework because there's a lot of things you can achieve using the different types of um, enterprise architecture framework. 
if your focus is security, uh, which is where you have the SAPSA, which is uh, an example of the open source enterprise security architecture framework, then you, you know you need to sit down and ensure that you know you select the right enterprise architecture framework type, and then you make use of that. Now the benefit of enterprise architecture, uh, this would um, this cannot be overemphasized as enterprise architecture will deliver significant improvement in the following areas. I'm just going to mention um, three, the first three. Uh, enterprise architecture gives you the ability to rapidly adjust and adapt to new business circumstances, which is one of the you know, things that is needed or required for your organization to become agile. Uh, also, it also helps you know, the efficient and strategic use of your application and technology across the merged uh, legal entities and realization of your target um, enterprise architecture. Also, the management of information and data, as well as knowledge as a corporate asset. These are some of the benefits that you stand to gain you know, by implementing enterprise architecture. And this is what will actually help you to achieve the organizational agility. The risk of you know you not implementing the enterprise architecture failure to implement an enterprise architecture will present uh, the following risk one of which is your inability to rapidly respond to challenges which is driven by uh, business changes for example in the open group architecture uh, framework there is a sub you know architecture within the ADM uh, phase, which actually talks about business architecture. This is where you look at what are your strategies, uh, what are your long-term goals, what are your mid-term goals, and this will actually help in ensuring that, you know, when you are actually trying to develop your architecture, uh, business architecture uh, 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 design, you capture the necessary or the essence of um, why you know, the organization is in business, and this actually helps you to address that. Also, another key risk of, um, you know, you not implementing enterprise architecture is it's, it's, you know, lack of focus on the enterprise requirement. That is, you are just, you know, the such organization will just be reacting, you know, but this will not help you because this will not, you know, assist you in saving cost, you know, and the bottom line is, you know, you should be able to save costs. Also, lack of common direction and uh, synergy is also another risk uh, organization uh, will face for not implementing enterprise architecture. Also, incomplete visibility of the current and future target uh, is also a key risk. Inability to predict the impact of the future changes, uh, increased um, gaps and um, architecture conflicts. Uh, lack of commonality and consistency due to the absence of standards. Because one of the things you, you stand to benefit in enterprise architecture is that it helps you to standardize your process because for every change that you need to make, you need to first consult your, uh, your uh, architecture vision, which is a key document uh, at the preliminary phase within your ADM uh, before, you know, you can you can make any change you know to to any part of the enterprise and you know for that change and for any change that is being made it, it actually permits um, the uh, entire organization enterprise architecture as an enabler of um, organizational agility um, the primary goal of enterprise architecture is to define the desirable future state of organization business processes as well as IT systems and to you know provide that roadmap for achieving this target from the current state. Uh, two key components of enterprise architecture are the planning process and the direct and tangible output of that planning process which is the you know, representation that is your EA documentation, one of which is your architecture diagram, your roadmap and other your viewpoints and your views and your viewpoints and other, you know, artifacts. You know, the task of enterprise architecture is to help you translate those broader principles, uh, you know, capabilities and goals 
you know, defined in the strategy into a system and processes which are standardized that enables the enterprise to realize these goals and objectives in a swift and, you know, rapid manner, you know, because once you have these defined, you know, standardized, it helps you a lot and it helps you to rapidly respond to any change within your uh, business um, environment. Still in continuation, you know, agility can be considered, you know, to be organizational capabilities that consist of two components, namely the ability to sense and respond swiftly to change in the environment. The change may arise from competition, shift in customer preferences, regulatory or legal changes, or technological advancement. These are some of the things that, you know, in your architectural vision, you know, it will have been captured because um, one of the things that, you know, for example, in if you're using the open group architecture framework, that's the TOGAF, at the preliminary phase, um, you'll be looking at things like um, your organizational context, uh, the key drivers and elements of, you know, the organization, uh, the requirement for the architecture work, what are your architectural principles, you also need to decide which framework you know to be used at uh, the relationship between the management framework and the enterprise uh, architect uh, architectural maturity uh, this actually helps you uh, you know in ensuring that you know you pre prepare for that change and the purpose of EA is to operate across the enterprise the often fragmented legacy of processes, both manual and automated, into an integrated environment that is responsive to change and supportive of the delivery of the business strategy. That is, that is EA as an enabler of organizational agility because that's the sole purpose of you know why you're using EA, you know, as an enabler of organizational uh, agility. And here are, you know, the benefits of EA as an enabler of organizational uh, benefits. It helps you to have an organizational alignment, uh, information availability, uh, resource optimization, resource uh, complementary, um, increase in adaptability, you know, uh, reutilization. It also helps you in saving some oper uh, you know, operational cost. Uh, you also have some improved um, quality of um, service. So these are just some of the benefits that you stand to gain um, with the implementation of um, you know, enterprise architecture as an enabler of organizational agility. In conclusion, um, enterprise architecture is an architectural and organizational foundation for organizational agility. Enterprise architecture can actually increase organizational agility, in, in particular, the capabilities to respond to change. Uh, you know, it helps you to know what your future target is and what is your current uh, capability and what are your what your future capabilities should be. So it actually prepares you for that change within your business environment. Um, the role of um, enterprise architecture is to enable the linking of IT resources with specific sense and respond capabilities which is characterized by holistic governance and a change of um, business um, culture. And on that note, I will say uh, thank you for uh, listening at this point. If you have um, any questions for me, uh, please uh, let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Roger, for this uh, great presentation. As we have uh, some time left, we'll go uh, through some questions. The first question is, uh, what online sources would you uh, recommend to dig into some business cases for applying architecture framework in real life. No, can you, can you repeat that question again? I didn't get yeah, that. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, one of the attendees has uh, asked you uh, what online sources okay. would you recommend to dig into some business cases for applying architecture framework in real life. <laughs> 
uh, okay, let's say uh, finance or uh, IT industry? Well, um, one of the things I, I usually recommend as an enterprise architect is for you to actually um, look at the organization because for every organization they, are, they have cultures and um, the whole essence of enterprise architecture is not to is to actually ensure that you get you know you look at the framework itself whatever framework you have decided it's to four to use uh, whatever um, enterprise architecture framework you've decided to use is for you to ensure you tailor it into your own environment you know and that is why uh, this is one of the advantages that um, TOGA, the open group architecture has over other types of um, you know enterprise architecture framework uh, for example um, if you are in a finance industry and you want to you make use of um, enterprise architecture you need to ask yourself this question what exactly do you want to use enterprise architecture framework to achieve do you want to achieve do you want to use it to achieve innovation or do you want to use it to achieve business process uh, planning or do you want to, uh, to use it to achieve um, organizational strategy or do you want to use it to achieve um, you know you want to save the organization uh, some cost instead of you know having to reinvent the wheel all the time you are able to harmonize you know your 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 your, your cost and you know you're able to take a holistic view before uh, purchasing anything that is you know uh, organizational wide related so you need to ask yourself that question for what exactly do you want to achieve you know by using enterprise architecture thank you very much uh, mr. Ojo another question for you is uh, uh, in your experience how uh, COVID-5 could be an enabler for um, enterprise architecture uh, implementation and how does uh, it's uh, in integration with uh, other uh, frameworks. Okay, um, you see, um, the open group architecture, which is TOGAF, actually allows you to, you know, borrow from other standards uh, like the ICE 2001, uh, the COVID framework, and you know, you borrow. For example, if you're making use of the COVID framework. Um, you know, because the COVID framework has, you know, the 37 processes, uh, five of which is for governance and the others um, for management. You need to also ask which COVID process are you trying to borrow from and are you trying to integrate into the enterprise architecture framework? And in which of the, in which phase within the ADM are you trying to integrate it into? Are you trying to integrate it, uh, you know, at the business uh, architecture framework or you're trying to integrate it at the, you know, technology framework, or you're trying to integrate it at the um, information uh, architecture, or you're trying to integrate it at um, a sub a sub architecture phase, which is the information or, or data. So, um, you know, uh, there's 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 there's, there's uh, uh, you know a lot. Uh, Togaf can actually accommodate. You know, going into um, other frameworks, and you know, you borrow a leave from it. Um, you can also one of the things you can also borrow from um, COVID is um, using the capability maturity model from COVID. If you decide not to use the CMMI, uh, you know capability maturity model, you can actually go to COVID and you borrow that from to actually assess your enterprise architecture capability uh, maturity, uh, which is um, another key one. Uh, you can also go to COVID and you know you borrow. You look at them, uh, for example, COVID-5 for risk, and you know borrowed it from. But you need to know which phase within the uh, architecture framework are you going to actually integrate that into, and what exactly do you stand to achieve? Another key example is um, um, the open group architecture does not actually address security. So when you're using the uh, open group architecture framework to achieve organizational ability and security is one of your key concerns. You can actually go to ISO 27001 or you go to a framework like SAPSA and you borrow that security leave from it and you integrate it into the uh, open group architecture framework in order for you to achieve your uh, objective. Hello? Hello?
Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm, 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 I hope I've been able to address that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. Another question for you is, what are the main measurement tools to assess on the efficient implementation of uh, uh, enterprise architecture? So, what are uh, the main decision criteria for choosing the appropriate framework? Well, like I said, it depends on the organization and what the organization stands to achieve. Uh, for some organization, uh, for example, if you are within the, if you are a government entity, I don't see any reason why you need to make use of, um, uh, in my view, I don't see any reason why you need to make use of uh, uh, the open group architecture framework when you already have an enterprise architecture framework that is government focused. And that is why you get to uh, see that um, for some, uh, you know, uh, you know, security-related government agencies like the FBI, they are always, um, you know, or they tend to use, uh, you know, the DODAF, uh, the MODAF. The, you know, the MODAF is the equivalent of DODAF, which is for the UK uh, Defense Department. That's for the MODAF. So uh, you really need to ask yourself, what exactly do you want to use enterprise architecture to achieve, and which industry do you do you operate within? Mr. Rojo? Yes, please. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, okay. Uh, are, you, are you finished with this, with your answer? Okay. Um, another, yes, yes uh, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, we'll go through another question. Um, one of attendees has asked you, can we say that a light organization is the same as a lean organization? Uh, no, you, you cannot outrightly say that a larger organization will have, because every organization has its own enterprise architecture maturity uh, level. Um, you know, the, 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 the capabilities of a larger organization may not necessarily be the same as a lean organization. And that's one of the things you need to factor in at the preliminary phase when you are, that's the primary phase of the ADM, that's if you are making use of your TOGAF, uh, which is the Open Group Architecture Framework, and also other types of enterprise architecture framework, you need to ensure what exactly is your future, uh, what, first you need to know what is your, what, what, what um, do you want your future capability maturity model, what exactly do you want to achieve in the future, and what is your current capability maturity uh, level. This is very, very key and this, you know, is one of the things that you need to address uh, at the preliminary phase when you're trying to, uh, you know, get your um, architecture uh, vision because you need to know uh, your, your future state and you also need to know your current state if your current capability will help you to achieve what you have in the future or what you intend to achieve, that's your business goals, your business strategy in the future and that is where you know the gaps you know comes in and um, for each of the uh, architectural phase within the ADM that's your business architecture your information architecture your data architecture and your technology architecture you can decide to do your gap assessment in each of the each of this phase or you run the iterative process of the ADM and at the end of the day it helps you to know or what are those gaps? I want to identify your future state first and your current state. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Ojo. Okay. Uh, another question for you, it's because we have a lot of questions. Uh, another question is uh, how to understand if company needs an IT or an a security uh, architect? No, no, no. Say that again, please. Can you just repeat that question? Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Um, how to understand if company needs an IT okay. or a security okay. architect? Um, in, in today's 21st century, I, I don't think, this is just my view, I don't think there's no organization that doesn't require security. So, um, and because every organization today are actually leveraging on IT as a tool in order for them to achieve the business goals and objectives. So, in my view, every organization that is trying to implement enterprise architecture 
also needs to ensure that one of the things uh, the enterprise architecture address is you know uh, security as well as IT because your IT strategy needs to align with your business strategy in order for you to achieve a holistic architecture vision in order to also you know help, you know achieve your governance framework which is one of the outputs of your preliminary phase also um, in order for you to you know achieve your business goals principles as well as you know what are the drivers these things are part of what you need to ensure your enterprise architecture uh, address thank you very much uh, the last yeah. question is uh, what is the relationship between enterprise architecture and risk management well uh, there's, a, there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of relationship uh, between the enterprise architecture and uh, the risk management um, from the look of things for every organization um, you know there are risks that are bound whether it is um, internal or external and this is one of the reasons why as part of your um, your uh, preliminary phase which is a phase within the ADM uh, one of the things you need to capture is you know principles and constraints you also need to capture uh, you need to identify your stakeholders requirements what are the key drivers what are who are your stakeholders because for every stakeholders they come in with their own risk um, so risk you know is part of the um, iterative ADM cycle uh, within the TOGAF enterprise um, architecture also for every change that is being made or being implemented even after the enterprise architecture has been established um, you also need to look at the risk what is the risk you know is it high is it low is it medium and this has to be has to be captured because um, failure for you to identify your stakeholders their concerns their business requirements you know engaging these stakeholders defining your enterprise architecture scope boundaries looking at the cultural factors the issues all these are major risks so um, you cannot um, you know totally eliminate this risk but rather it is better they are identified and they are addressed as you move on within the in, within each ADM phase so there's a lot of uh, they, they, you know, the risk has a lot to do uh, within each ADM phase and that's why you can either address the risk as you go on within each of the ADM phase which is the uh, enterprise uh, which is the architecture uh, development uh, method phase is that you address the risk in each phase or you address the risk after each you know uh, iterative cycle you know depending on uh, how large or how uh, depending on, on on the on the capability maturity uh, uh, of your organization so risk is you know it, it's a key one which um, has to be considered even within the enterprise um, architecture uh, framework thank you mr. Ojo I want to thank you once more for uh, this highly informative presentation and answering the questions uh, I want to thank all the attendees as well for joining us this webinar we hope you enjoyed uh, it and uh, you can watch this session recorded and you the presentation slides on our website www.pcb.com please uh, be informed that next Monday we are hosting another uh, webinar uh, titled ICO 2001 uh, implementation using force field analysis thank you uh, very much and uh, have a nice day bye bye